All right, brother. So first off, down in Baltimore, crabs are huge. Mm -hmm. Since you got to spend a lot of time down there, did you eat crabs a lot? There was a couple of places that we would go to. There was a place called Costas, it's kind of outside the city. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys would go to get some good crabs there. So it was definitely something I tried out when I first got there. And then as I was there for a lot longer, there was some other good food in the city that we liked. They're always kind of tough to eat. Like they take a long time to crack yeah. and actually get yeah. the crab meat. And then like an hour goes by and you're not full. Right. And like you got cuts on your hands. Yeah. There was a, I think one of the first times it took my wife, she didn't like cracking the, the crabs. And so I was like the whole day I was cracking the crabs get, and then she was taking the meat. So I was like, cracking crabs for her and me and I was over it. I was like, I didn't even eat. And I was like, this is dumb. We're never doing this again. Being a huge history buff, have you been able to locate a confidential black book of some of the wildest conspiracies out there? I haven't. Um, the thing that I've been on like kind of lately with some history stuff is kind of like collecting like rare items from, you know, I, you know, my grandfather served in World War II. Um, my dad was in the military in Vietnam. Um, I have friends and stuff like that so that are in the military that have served. So I'm actually in the process of collecting things from them, whether it's uniforms. Uh, my grandfather passed away, but he had a purple, he has a purple heart in my house and making a, having a room where it's going to be all dedicated to, you know, whether artifacts that I buy from like those war periods, like all the way back to the Revolutionary War and then current stuff from like family members. I think we're going to have a a pretty cool collection when it's all said and done that I can put together. So awesome. Hopefully put some photos up so people can check that out on social media whenever I get it done. Did Neil Armstrong land on the moon? <laughs> uh, I would say a 100%, right? Uh, I could be wrong. We, um, when I was in Baltimore, we went down to NASA in Houston and we walked through the room where the mission control was when they, when they launched and landed on the moon. And, I'm not gonna name the player, but he was like, so, he was talking to one of the astronauts that just like, got back from the International Space Station. He was like, so, okay, did uh, did we really land on the moon or that was the whole thing? And we just started dying laughing and we're like, are you really gonna, and the guy was like, no, we, uh, we, we, we landed on the moon, you know? But it was so funny, he was so genuine, like, okay, hey, I just, I gotta ask this question. Like, did we really, it was that staged and the astronaut thought it was really funny. And uh, that was a cool experience though. That, that, I'm, I've been starting to get like, you know, the history and space, like I'm kind of maybe all over the board with stuff that I like, but I'm definitely, uh, my son's really into science right now and planets, so I feel like my hobbies are kind of the stuff that my kids are getting into too. You guys got a chance to take some nice photos at Yankee Stadium, you brought your family out yeah. there, and it was nice that when you announced that you were coming back to the Yankees, uh, you posted the one photo mm -hmm. of all you guys on the mound, that looked like it was a special moment for you guys. Yeah, it's always nice. Um, you know, the kid, my kids are so young right now that you try to take as many photos of them at the baseball field as you can. And uh, the two All-Star games I've been to, they're so young. Like, my wife's like, you need to make a couple more so they actually, like, remember them. Um, just keep playing, Zach. Yeah, you just keep playing, <laughs> keep playing. So, but those are, those are cool memories, like getting on the field. And son's four now, so he knows what's going on. And he loves coming to the field. And he always asks me, hey, can I come to the ball ball field with you today? And I'm like, I mean... I mean, you can, yeah, but you can't, like, I mean, daddy's got stuff to do with the field. He's like, well, I'll just stay at your locker, you know? I'm like, so I'm looking forward to, like, when he's a little bit older. It's like bringing him in, and, and uh, even my daughters, too, you know? I, I feel like in baseball, we always, in Baltimore, Showalter, that was one cool thing that he did. There was a lot of uh, daughters there, and he had a whole day in the clubhouse where it was just bringing daughters to the field day. Um, and that's pretty cool, because the girls get left out, and, uh, you know, Obviously, it's tough because it's just it's an all male environment in the clubhouse and stuff. But um, it's still nice when you can bring your daughter in there too, and it's not always you know my son coming in. Mm -hmm. You got your daughter the pink glove, right? Yeah, yeah. That was I, awesome to see. Yeah, I got her that glove. I got my son one uh, last year, and my daughter was playing with it all the time. And I have another, I have a newborn a daughter, so I got to get her one next year so everyone will have their glove. But. Yeah, she likes it. She uh, she's into she's into the baseball, and she's only two. But um, my wife has some funny videos of her like, coming to the game. She knows I'm coming in the game and stuff like that, and we're on TV. So it's it's cool. I try to keep her involved. And uh, you know, I, I come from a family of all boys, so I always got to be you know with my son and stuff. I always got to remember like you know my daughter's into everything that that's going on too. She she can be a little tomboy, and enjoy playing sports and, and baseball too. So always keep her involved. So when did the Dominican side 
come into the Britton family or your your like family tree? So, we I grew up in Southern California. So, um, when I was younger, I just remember going and seeing. Uh, we called her Mama Ocha, okay. and she was the one that we'd go down. She didn't speak very good English. We'd go down to her house, and she'd make us authentic Dominican food. And that Dominican side is fascinating. How well is your Spanish? It's awful, awful. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's the hardest part is that I don't speak Spanish. So I felt like if I did, it'd be easier to explain, you know, how you know, my mom's Dominican. And I always thought that'd be pretty cool, you know. And uh, I think nowadays it's just important that if you can learn another language, man, you're just so far ahead of the game. So you know a thing or two about Dominican recipes. What's your go-to? My favorite is like, is Moro. So M-O-R-O, uh, rice. So it's like a rice and bean mixed together. Um, you know, you throw some green olives, like chopped up green olives in there. Um, like pollo gasado is really good too. But uh, like Mama Ultra, she would, she would make a lot when we come there. I think she'd make some like oxtail and some. Not, not, then you're getting into some like cow tongue stuff that like, like I drew the line there, you know. But my aunt um, used to make uh, rice and beans, it's so good. Some chicken in there, but the pollo gasado too. But. Rice and beans would be my go-to, which is obviously a staple over there. You had tweeted out big news about Switching the name, my name change. Up. I was like back and forth. Spelling it with an A, spelling it with a K. Like a K is officially, like it's on my birth certificate, right? So all my legal documents with a K, driver's license K. It just had been, uh, it had been something that, uh, I can blame my parents, but. <laughs> And it was just like, yeah, you know, we wanted you to be an age. The birth certificate kind of got messed up and just never went to change it, you know. And, and long story short, the, the Yankees, when they, were sent, they sent me my contract over this year, they had my name with an age. Wife being an attorney, was like, hey, you know, it's got to match up. It's got to be like, it's got to be like legit. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll tell them. And I called Scott Boris and hey, the name of my contract's wrong. And he was like, oh yeah, you know, same thing. He's like, okay, we'll make sure we change it. One thing led to another, They're like, why are you going by an H? And I was like, it's a stage name. Like, I don't know. Like, I figured it was a slow free agent market at that time. And uh, I was right because that tweet took off more than I ever thought it would for just saying that I was changing one letter of my name. It was funny though. Some of the responses I got were great. Actually, I, there were so many Zacks that you know, tweeted at me and commented on that, saying that they go through the same stuff all the time. Wow. You know, or even other names, too. I thought it was funny. Like, it's not, it's a universal problem where people are just like, whatever. You know, there's always, like, trolls on any social media. But for the most part, I would say the interaction with fans on the social media, um, if you do it the right way, um, is really re rewarding. You can reach people in other countries. You know, those fans might not be able to travel to see you play or ask you questions. I always find the interactions pretty positive. I think it's it's a great tool to get your message out. With where social media stands today in baseball, uh, what would you like to see more of? It's a good question. I, I think eventually there's going to be way more technology in the game, right? Because um, if you know, if I'm watching football, if I'm watching basketball, if I'm watching hockey or wh whatever, soccer, you know, it's always cool to like what are the players thinking? What are they talking about mm -hmm. here? Some guys will be like, hey, yeah, you can mic me up when I'm pitching or, you know, when I'm out playing the field. You know, you see that the All-Star game, right? They're micing up an outfielder or something like that. I think that kind of thing, I think fans are interested in that. You're interested in that. And anything to make the game more interactive for the younger generation of kids because everything's e access is so easy. You know, you want as much access as you can get. You can interact with fans doing something that's completely non-baseball related, um, whether it's online gaming or anything like that. I think. Uh, there's a lot of cool ways to interact with fans nowadays. And so we're, we're pretty fortunate to play in like this area of where you have that. And uh, it'll be crazy, you know, when my kids, when I'm long done playing and it'll be interesting to see how the game is and what the, the next generation of kids has to deal with from like a social media standpoint. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be nuts.